Hey guys, one of the most common questions that I get asked is to describe the difference between jig and reel rhythms. And I did a video about that a while back, um, but I, my, also my most popular video is uh, a series of exercises that I've done, which I will link up here or over here once I figure out how to do that, maybe down below in the comments. Um, and it just kind of covers all the basic exercises that I do, the taps and the cuts and the rolls and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of wanted to combine those two things, that one question plus a new, a new exercise video, specifically one covering jig rhythms, since that seems to be something that a lot of people get stuck on. And it was something I got stuck on when I was first starting out. The, the best solution to that, I would say, is to just listen to a lot of music, um, particularly from, you know, from proper trad groups or, or individual players, because you really kind of need to hear it to get that lift, to be able to feel it and understand it. But there's a handful of exercises that we can cover here, too, that I think might help, hopefully kind of help break it down a little bit anyway. Um, I'm going to start kind of more basic and then get incrementally a little bit more tricky as we go on, but it's just a series of exercises they can do just using a scale um, to, to kind of get that, that sound into your head and rather translating it from your head to your fingers, which is the, the difficult bit. Um, so the first thing is basically a tonguing exercise, and it's just to kind of get the basic rhythm. And I'll play it more up-tempo so you can kind of hopefully hear what it's supposed to sound like and then run it through a little bit slowly. But So it kind of would go like this if we're going to just do a basic D scale. So hopefully you can hear that kind of lift that you want to get out of a jig. I'm going to play it slowly. So you're kind of accenting that first note. You're leaning on that a little bit. And then uh, tonguing to separate the other two to get that kind of that, that lift sound. So whatever speed you play it at, the trick with these things and with all these exercises that we're going to run through is to make sure that the rhythm stays intact. So if it's, if it's played slow, the tonguing or the ornaments, whatever it might be, are in the same tempo. So you're not, you're not throwing yourself off by doing the, the lift. You, know, they still have to have, you still have to have that proper rhythm. So that's one. Run that a few times and just kind of get used to that sound. Because that's really what you're going for when you're playing a jig. Now, the next thing you can do is kind of start working in some of the grace notes and some of the ornaments. So the first one, the easiest one, would be just a simple cut. Clean that out. Try that again. So again, more slowly. And on the first half, you probably notice I'm using this finger. It doesn't really matter what you do. I would say probably be consistent. That's just how I learned it and how I always do it. <laughs> so, and then after that, you're going to switch to the top finger here. And again, you're still getting that same uh, lift to it. You know, you're still using the um, the various uh, the ornaments and things like that. But your, your your goal then is not to try and throw off the overall sound. So if you can avoid that, so much the better. Um, so that run that a few times and you can work on getting it up tempo. So you still have that same kind of solid jig rhythm, hopefully, if you're doing it the way that you should be. So if you can get that, um, then you can work on some of the other ornaments. Um, the, the double tap that I like to do. Now there again, I'm always doing it on the third note. Excuse me, the first, the one in each set, the, the, the triplets, I guess it would be. Coming down, I tend to do it a little bit differently. It just always seem to make more sense when you're coming down a, a note to hit it on that second beat. Not entirely sure why, I just kind of like the sound of it. Feel free to experiment, change it up. And again, as you get quicker at it, you're trying to get to that, that more up-tempo sound. So work on that slowly and then kind of see if you can get it up, up to tempo. 
And again, all we're doing is running scales up and down the D scale. And you can do it on the G scale or A scale, whatever you want to do. The D scale just seemed to make the most sense uh, because it's the easiest, really. Um, and all you're trying to do is get that sound. It doesn't really matter what key you're in as long as you can get that, that sound, that, that, that j proper jig sound, jig rhythm. So that's the double taps. The other thing you can do is the what I call crossing noise. I don't know if there's a, a better name for it, but and again, up, uh, you, you, you're as I'm going up the scale, I'm hitting it on the bottom bottom note because you need that one hole below it. Coming down, you're again hitting it on the second note because you still need the one below it. So it's a little bit different coming down the scale because you need that extra hole below it to, to get that crossing note. So then the last one that I would say, the last little exercise would be rolls. It's a bit of a different scale in this case, um, but I'll, I'll just play it. like that. Um, so again, just because it's a different ornament, you're going to mix it up a little bit, but you're still trying to get that same feel. So that if you're playing it up tempo, uh, so hopefully that'll give you something to work on. Again, it's just a real basic exercise and you can kind of knock out a whole bunch of things at once. The tonguing, single grace notes, cuts, rolls, all that kind of stuff, work it all in there. Um, and you're just really trying to get the feel of the jig rather than worrying about the scale, the, the particular notes that you're playing, the melody, things like that. So it's just a good exercise to kind of work in. If you're working on some tunes, by all means keep doing that. But if you need something to kind of mix it up, run a few of those. Uh, it's just good kind of fundamental stuff that hopefully will help kind of get that, that rhythm to sink in a little bit better. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, any suggestions for the next one, I'll be happy to take a look at them. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks very much, y'all. Bye-bye.